Hello and welcome to our show. This is our weekly Art of Advocacy show that I do every Thursday at noon Mountain Time. And today we're going to be talking about TAFAR. T, I can actually show you <laughs> the acronym. It is T-F-A-R, TAFAR. <laughs> so I decided we should be playful and fun and think of playful acronyms that we can use. So before we get into exactly what TAFAR is all about, I want you to think about when you get an invitation to an IEP meeting for your son or daughter. So what are some of the first thoughts <laughs> that come into your brain when you look at that IEP invitation. And yes, we've got some great people here. So Laura says, yes, let me show your comment here. <laughs> she says, so many terms that I am unfamiliar with. Funny the things I was coming up with with Googling. I know, I loved <laughs> Laura because I was saying, what do you think Tafar means? And she's one of her ideas was total functional assessment review. <laughs> and funny, the focused advocate rules. Look at you. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think um, one of the things is it's good to be playful and have fun. So even though we're going to be talking about some strategies that are really important, I think, in our life space, um, I also want to embrace having more fun, <laughs> not only on our live shows, but fun every day in my life. So that's my big goal. And let's get back to you just got notice of, ah, I have an IEP meeting coming up. So many times we can have these automatic thoughts that trigger all kinds of other things. Now, before we jump into exactly how to use the TAFAR strategies, let me do a quick introduction. If you're new to my Art of Advocacy show, I'm Charmaine Tanner. I'm a parent, a retired teacher, a number one best-selling author on Amazon for a book called The Art of Advocacy, a parent's collaborative guide to a, um, a parent's guide to a collaborative IEP process. Um, usually I just call it the art of advocacy <laughs> so then I don't have to stumble on the rest of the words but that is available on Amazon if you'd like it the Kindle version is just 99 cents um, but the other thing I wanted to share with you that I'm really excited about for the new year is I love doing my weekly shows here on Thursdays and I've also created this opportunity for you who would like to take your advocacy skills to an even higher level. And I do have an awesome group of parents that have joined us in a membership community, and we are calling ourselves the Parent Advocate Trailblazers. <laughs> so if you would like to be one of those trailblazers, all you have to do is type in the word membership in the comment section below. And then my IEP bot will give you a response on Facebook Messenger that says, please reply to this message with the word membership. So that means you have to type the word membership again. Um, and then you'll get the link for more details and information about a terrific, fabulous group of parents that we have and our Parent Advocate Trailblazer membership group. Um, and you can, you know, decide if that's something that you would like to do. There is both annual and monthly membership um, subscriptions available that I offer. So, you know, type in the word membership, go check it out and see if that's a good match for what you would like to do as far as up in your ab advocacy skills for this new year that we're going into. So if we look at that scenario of um, 
we just got this notice that we have an IEP um, meeting coming up. I want you to type in the number, type in one number, one through 10. One is like, uh, this is like the worst thing that could happen. I'd rather have a root canal than go to another IEP meeting or all the way up to 10. If it's like, yes, I love this. I love going to our team and sitting down and having time to talk about what's working well and how we can think of new, creative, wonderful ideas to put in place. So type in a number, one through 10. One being like, eh, nope, <laughs> no, I don't wanna go to this meeting. To 10, I'd be overjoyed to go to another IEP meeting. Um, even if you're watching the replay, I come back and look at comments and respond to your questions and comments. So go ahead and type that number one through 10 in, and we can get kind of a baseline of how you feel when you think of going to another, um, let's see, IEP meeting. <laughs> And uh, let's see, I realized that I had a couple people that wanted me to, um, uh, so we have some people live. So if you're here with this, Hello, I have to turn down my phone. So Eric is here. Hey. Um, and let's see. I'm trying to remember. I had a couple people text me and say, tag me on the Facebook show. So let me quickly type in their names here and tag them in our Facebook show. So the other thing is, um, oh, so Erica says one. I know, Erica, it's like, uh, it can be like the pits, right? So what we're going to do today, Erica, you and I are going to forge ahead and see how we can change those automatic thoughts that come up. Um, and so that's a clue for what the T stands for. Um, and let me take this down. The T stands for in Tafar. <laughs> So the T stands for thoughts. And there's several different kinds of thoughts we have, different categories that we can um, look at. But today, for our purpose, the two types of thoughts that we're going to talk about are automatic and coping or more positive thoughts. So what I find myself is that I can um, easily have my mind race a mile a minute <laughs> and kind of make up these scenarios and stories. And I can like put so much energy and time and thought into it. It just kind of snowballs and it's like kind of ridiculous. And on a logical level, I know that's not a real helpful way to go through life, but on an emotional level, sometimes that's where we are. So we're going to be talking about first looking at our thoughts and how that can help um, create, I guess, kind of like a, a realization of where we currently are. So let me put this up here. So we're going to be starting by what you think. And I'm just using the example of an invitation to an IEP meeting because I think that's what a lot of us can relate to, right? So, hey, Lisa. Um, so both you and Erica and our other friends that are with us live, type in the comments, what, what are some of your thoughts when you receive that invitation to an IEP meeting? Um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. So I would just love if you could type in the comments. Um, Liz is here with us. And so is Erica. <laughs> and we have some other live people that haven't um, joined in officially in the conversation yet. So feel free to do that. But listen, Erica, what do you think when 
you get that invitation to the IEP meeting. What are some first thoughts that like go through your brain? <laughs> so if you can type those in the comments, that would be great. Um, because what I find is we operate so many times on these automatic thoughts or these kind of knee jerk thoughts or sometimes they're called reactions, but I think the thought comes before the, you know, before any action. So what are some of those thoughts that you have? Um, and I'm looking here. Oh, yeah. So Lori's here. Lori, one of her first thoughts is it's going to be tough. And that I would bet is shared by a lot of parents when they think about going to that next meeting. It's going to be tough. And what is that based on? It's based on past experience, right? And so when we go to meetings and when they are, you know, frustrating, when they are tough, when we find ourselves arguing more than agreeing, when we leave the meeting still not quite sure what's going to happen, each time that happens, that builds this pattern and it starts this belief. Um, so it's not just like a habit, <laughs> but it's a belief that IEP meetings equal it's going to be tough. So that's what your automatic thought is. And so Lisa is saying that, um, let's see. Immediately, my thoughts go to thinking of goals and what things have been working and what hasn't and what I'm going to need to discuss. So, Lissa, so that's that, you know, it sounds interesting because you're coming from, OK, this is coming. Let's get on it. Let's figure out what we're going to talk about. Let's figure out what the new goals are going to be. And so you kind of automatically, it sounds, I don't know, go into this shift of, okay, this is here. Let's get to it. So that's, that's, I love to see the different, the wide perceptions. And it's not like anyone is right or wrong with what those immediate thoughts are. It's just when we know ourselves better, we can do better and we can do more. So let's keep on going here. Oh, so Vicki, Vicki says, Ugh, I have to think of everything he will need for the whole next year. Will I think of everything? And yeah, it's like, oh, this is my chance. We got to make sure we get everything covered. And like, how overwhelming is that? I mean, like, you feel like I'm holding my child's future in my hands. I've got to get this right. So that thought we're going to show in a minute here, how that thought continues <laughs> and how that creates some other things. So thanks for sharing. I love it. I love it. I love it when you guys are sharing things because then it makes the life much more meaningful. Um, so Erica says, ah, do they know the laws? Are they going to treat me like an important member? Are they going to listen to me? And again, so much of that comes from our patterns of what has happened before, right? That history we have of meetings where we go and we feel like we're a token parent sitting there. And yeah, they ask us a few questions, but do they really stop and think and really listen to what I'm saying? And it can be so intimidating that it's hard for parents to feel that empowerment that, yeah, I am an equal member here. So thanks, Erica. That's great. I love, um, I love your honesty and how you, um, put things out there. So thank you so much. And Lori also says another thought is the lack of implementation. Yeah, so it's like, I'm going to go to this meeting, I've got an invitation, I've got to schedule this, 
and whoop, <laughs> our mind can race to, ah, uh, what if none of this really gets implemented, right? It was just kind of motions we went through and hoops we jumped through, but nothing really gets implemented like it's supposed to. So to me, that's one of those times, and I'm like an expert at this, <laughs> my mind racing ahead. And it's like we start creating these stories and the more we think about them, the more we kind of toss them around, the more they become this habit and this belief system that we have, right? So our first strategy that we're going to um, look at is figuring out what our automatic thoughts are. And you've already done that. So that's terrific. Um, the next thing is we're going to connect this. So let me bring up this slide. Um, we're going to show how those automatic thoughts then trigger certain feelings. And there's a difference between what we think and what we feel. So let me just give um, a couple examples here. So sometimes you might hear a friend say, oh, I just, I think I'm just so depressed today. And actually that's the feeling that they're having. And if we try to move back one step to the thinking part and probably this automatic thinking is um, like I'm thinking I'm just, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to, because my mind is racing right now. So I'm thinking of a couple different things. But the thinking is, you know, I have tried this before and it hasn't worked. So that's what the thought is. And then the feeling is, therefore, I'm depressed. But while I was going through here, <laughs> I was just thinking in my mind, one of the things that I missed when we were talking about just our thoughts. So let me go back here. So when you have those automatic thoughts, one of the strategies that you can do is say and recognize the automatic thought and then change that into a more positive coping kind of thought. And what I've done is I put together, um, like just this short um, PDF handout, but it's got some great resources in it and it goes through this process in a little more detail. So in the, um, in the E uh, companion handout that I have for this, for this show, it has a table and it will show you what some automatic thoughts are. It will give you some questions to ask yourself like how helpful is this thought or do I really have objective data to support this thought? And then the third column is how you can transform that thought and make it into a more positive and sometimes called coping thought. So I wanted to make sure I told you about that because what we do today in our live show is just kind of scratching the surface and I wanted to make sure that you had a written handout. So um, for people in our parent There I am. <laughs> so anyway, I was saying before we get interrupted here, 
I've developed this handout that goes with the show. If you are a member of our Parent Advocacy Trailblazers, you will get that copy in our membership group. So I know um, Erica and Lissa are here and they are Parent Advocate Trailblazers. And um, Vicki and Lori and the others that are watching us live, if this is something that you're interested in, all you have to do is type in the word membership and you can get a link for more information about that. So, and I have a wonderful friend here. So let me see, I have Tracy Cox. So I'm going to bring up Kate, uh, Tracy. Oh, you're gone, and I'm here. We're, I understand that we're talking about think
Welcome back. The stream. Yeah. <sighs> 